Okay, I've got 12.03, so uh, so let's begin being mindful of everybody's time. Um, hello and uh, welcome. My name is Dean McEwen. I'm the, uh, the Director of the Master of Management in Artificial Intelligence Program here at Smith School of Business at Queen's University. So thanks a lot for taking time out of your day to, uh, to meet with me and, and to hear about the program a little bit. Um, I am joined by my colleagues, Jen and Alex here, and so they're going to be answering questions. So if you have any questions during the presentation, please use the Q&A button uh, inside Zoom. Um, if you ask the questions, uh, they will come back and, and give you an answer. Um, they might uh, save a couple of the questions for me to address sort of online um, at the end of the program or at the end of the webinar as well. So if you're not getting your question answered, uh, please be patient, I'll address it shortly. Um, but anyway, please, uh, you know, I encourage you to ask questions when you have it and um, get the information you need to be able to make sure this is the right program for you. Okay, so let's begin. So first off, I want to start with a, a land acknowledgement. Um, this is, uh, you know, it's a very important part for us, certainly at Queen's University and at Smith. Um, so we always want to do an acknowledgement about where we are and what we're doing. So Queen's itself is situated on traditional Huron and Wendat and Petun First Nations, the Seneca, the Mississaugas of Credit River, the Anishinaabe, and the Haudenosaunee territories. And we're grateful to be able to live, learn, and play on these lands as uninvited guests and upon these traditional territories. Okay, so let's start off again, you know, one of the purposes of these webinars is to make sure that you as the applicant, um, you're applying to the right program. And one of the great things about Smith is we've got about 14 different uh, professional master's programs. And so really, there's something for everybody in here, right? And so what I like to do is I come up with this screen here right at the beginning, just to make sure you're aware of the similar kind of programs that we offer. So we do have a Master's of Management and Analytics program. Um, and so in that program, we have specific courses about predictive modeling, acquisition analysis of data and pricing analytics. So again, not exactly AI, there are AI components to that. We have a machine learning course in there as well, <clears throat> but just to, so you're aware of MMA and analytics. Uh, we have our, of course, what you're here for now, the Masters of Management and Artificial Intelligence. And so there we do this sort of what I call a deeper dive into AI technology. So we have specific courses in deep learning, natural language processing, reinforcement learning. So if you want to get that sort of more technical uh, knowledge and know-how, this is definitely the program for you. We have another new program called MFIT, which is really about um, finance and innovation technology and the fintech world as well. So again, courses in automated investing, crypto economics, corporate finance, and things are more you know, into that. So if you want to do finance and technology, you know, that might be the better program. And uh, finally, our newest program in our suite is actually a master's of digital product management. So if you're thinking about you know, gamification, user design, software system security, prototyping and evaluation of digital products, that kind of stuff, um, then we have that program for you to look at as well. But let's continue on with uh, what we call MMAI. So uh, the AI program, it is a full master's degree. It takes place over 12 months. Uh, this is like, and it is an actual master's degree. So it's not a situation where you just pay your money, you get your paper at the end. Um, you can actually expect some significant academic rigor in the program itself. We do have exams, we have lots of assignments, we have team projects, we have presentations. So there's a lot of different types of evaluations and, and assessments in the program as well. So it is definitely going to be hard work, right? It's not an easy program. Uh, there is a lot of math in this program. So if math is not one of your strong suits, you may wanna rethink that a little bit and see you know, if this is the program for you. Um, what we do know, is that this kind of a program, especially being offered through a business school, it will really help you launch your career around AI. Um, we can actually, you know, we're gonna help you throughout the program. There's like team coaching services, there's career coaching services, and really it helps you to develop yourself, right? And figure out some strategies to overcome your weaknesses and to become not only a better 
employee, but ultimately a better manager in your organization with this advanced knowledge of artificial intelligence and technology. Um, you'll also work very effectively with each other. So this is a team-based program. So that's another significant part of what I call the culture of the program is that you're working very closely on a team of about six to eight students. Um, this is also, you know, a professional master's program is an opportunity for you to go outside of your norm, right? Start thinking about different things, trying different things, putting yourself out there in a, a risk averse environment, right? Because you're here to learn, we're here to support you in that learning. And so this is a great opportunity to try new things, practice your communications and your communication skills, develop your storytelling abilities as well, and become ultimately a better manager, person, leader in your organization, especially around technology. Now, what do we do here in the program? So when we look at the program as a whole, right, we want to be able to understand, you know, what's going on. What does it need? What do you need really to be successful? And um, as you know, I mean, we can develop these AI systems, but without, you know, verified and trusted data. And I think this is something that's kind of coming up with, you know, the latest sort of advances around, um, generative AI and that kind of stuff, right? You have to have the data sets uh, that you have to be able to trust, right? And you have to be able to verify that. So this is an important component of anything to do with artificial intelligence, because you can't train a system without having good training data that you can trust. And so that's why I put it on the screen as like the foundational piece of this. So once you've got your trusted and verified data, then you can start thinking about different types of analytics. Okay, and I'm going to talk about that on the next screen because there's like descriptive, predictive, prescriptive, and cognitive analytics, which is really about getting into artificial intelligence and the automated decision making, which you see is the, the top of this pyramid, because that's where we want to be. We don't want people to be involved in this. We want to develop a computer system, right, that does and that gathers the data, analyzes the data, and then makes a decision based on that. Now, what is analytics? I started to mention about the four different types. Um, and each of these types uh, of analytics is really important because it helps you understand the data. Um, descriptive analytics is, you know, what happened, right? That's your dashboards, your what we traditionally call business intelligence piece, right? What's going on? You build a nice dashboard, you get to see what's happening. That's never enough though, right? There's no organization wants to is happy with what happened yesterday or today. They want to know what's going to happen tomorrow. And that's where you get into this predictive analytics piece. And again, that's really important to be able to plan, plan ahead, right? But as we know, and especially we've been all been made very aware since the pandemic, uh, that models can be broken very quickly, right? There's variables in there that change unbeknownst to us. We can't control things like currency exchange rates. We can't, you know, pandemics, um, supply chain disruptions, that kind of stuff. So what we want to do is really get into prescriptive analytics, right? How do you make this happen? How do you optimize what's going on in your organization to make sure that those variables are somewhat controlled, right? And so we want to think about this prescriptively and say, okay, if we start hedging our our currency funds, right? And start building up a US dollars because that's where we want to buy our supplies from. Uh, we can do that, right? This is where you get into prescriptive analytics. And ultimately, as I mentioned earlier, we want to get into that cognitive piece, right? The artificial intelligence. We have machine learning that can actually do this stuff. It looks at all the different types of data and performs these types of analytics all automatically, right? And then actually makes a decision that supports your organization. And that is where we all wanna be. That's where every organization wants to be. And certainly that's where this program is gonna provide you with that fundamental knowledge on how you can get that, right? Now, what is AI and what do we do? Um, I was just talking, you know, a couple of minutes before this, uh, this started that, I'm going to have to rethink this slide a little bit because artificial intelligence, you know, I say here it's a broad concept. Well, it's even broader today, um, you know, with with things like generative AI, right? How did, where does it fit into this whole thing? And it is a type of machine learning, um, even chat GBT with open AI, right? They had to be trained. It, it was trained to do this stuff. So it is a piece of machine learning, but 
At the same time, I think when you want to, you know, make things fast and speed it up a little bit, you want to be able to apply some neural networking to that and some deep learning as well. And so these bubbles here are not quite as defined uh, today as they were even six months ago. So um, this is something that we're going to be looking at in this program. We do do, you know, it is artificial intelligence. There is machine learning, there's supervised learning, unsupervised learning, there's now generative AI, there's natural language processing, there's also natural language understanding. And then there's all a traditional deep learning part too, where we're trying to think how, the, how does the brain work? How can we make or replicate the speed of the brain along with the accuracy of, of human knowledge and build that out into a, a neural network, right? And that's sort of the ultimate speedy goal we want. But we also know that you need explainability. And so this is where, you know, the deep learning piece kind of falls apart a little bit because it's very hard to explain. How did you go from point A to point D? Um, you have to understand those steps, especially for certain regulated industries. And this is where, you know, Overall, this program is going to allow you to have a deep understanding of machine learning and the math of, high, of each algorithm. This is really, really important to understand this. And this is why, you know, I said at the top of the session that, you know, there is some academic rigor and there is a lot of math in this program. In fact, one of the first courses you take is a mathematics for AI course. And basically, it's about testing, right? You have to make sure that you understand, again, which model you're going to work for that particular situation with that particular data that you've got. You have to be able to understand how do you interpret the results of my model to make sure it's the right or the expected results of the model, maybe not the correct one, but certainly the expected ones. And then how do I evaluate whether my model is going to work, right? You're developing a computerized system that's doing all this stuff automatically for you. You have to make sure that as the data changes that goes into your model, you're still getting those reliable results you're expecting to do. And so you've got to be able to test for that. And then again, how do I select which features should be included in my model? You know, what is really important to help you make those decisions? What's not important? What can we take out? Or how can we think about this type of data and how can we get it from different types of sensors or different types of systems? And so all of those things are very, very complex. And so you're gonna have to have a good understanding of how to do all these things in order to be successful in an AI world. Now this program is, and I, I think I mentioned this before, but we are a business school, okay? Offering a very technical program. So. What does that mean, right? So that means that we have this sort of a broader approach to solving problems through artificial intelligence and data analysis. So we want to be able to understand what is the problem that you're trying to solve? You know, it's one thing to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to develop a natural learning pro uh, program. Uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, you know, hopefully get this kind of result out of it. But try to get that funded, right? <laughs> That's going to be your big challenge. So what we want to do in this program is really introduce you to the business side of things. Why would a company want to implement an AI solution? And it, the only reason for that is to solve a specific problem that that company is faced with. Whether it's a supply chain problem, marketing problem, a finance problem, whatever it is, uh, you know, the business is going to have to say, hey, this is an issue. We got to spend some money to fix this. We got to put out the resources. And so we think that, you know, we're going to talk to you uh, and say, what do you think? How can we solve this? How can we automatically price our products? Um, because we were getting, you know, thousands of hits every month. How can we look at that data? How can we generate an analysis and how can we make a decision for real time pricing? For example, if you think of airline tickets, theater tickets, all that kind of stuff. Um, where it has to be very, very fast and you have to be able to be very, very accurate, right? So you want your models to work properly. And so we want to understand what that business problem is because we need the resources and we need the time to do this right. And this is where you come into play, right, with this program because you're going to get that sort of fundamental knowledge of saying, okay, like, I understand the technology. I know how to apply it. 
but why would I apply it? And why is this particular technology the best way to solve that problem? And then of course, you got to test and you got to learn from that test. You got to make sure you're doing this right because if you're developing a system that can make thousands of decisions in a second, it better be the right decision because there's a huge risk assessment there. And I think that this is also one of the things that companies are looking at right now saying, this is just too risky. Yes, we can do it technically. Yes, we've got the computer horsepower and we've got the data, but oh my gosh, you know, if we do this wrong, uh, the risk is just insurmountable. So we want people in the process. We want to get away from that. We want to be able to test it, make sure it works. And that's the other piece, this last um, sort of bullet, developing business leaders through experience and team coaching. You can develop the best technology, the best algorithm. You can do all these kinds of things. But if you can't explain it to the business side or the people that are involved, if you can't sort of express what you're trying to say and convince people to support you in these endeavors, you've got, it's, it's never going to work, right? It's just not going to stop. So it's really important that you develop those communication skills so you can actually develop an ability to work with others. Things like, you know, persuasion, conflict resolution, negotiation, all those kinds of factors and those communication styles are extremely important to be able to get things done. And as we enter this world of what I'll call digital transformation, where we're trying to encourage business leaders to spend money on this kind of technology, you've got to be really good at explaining the benefits that you're going to get, because you also have to explain the risks and you're going to have to balance that out and see what's actually worthwhile doing. Now in this program itself, um, we've got basically, you know, three different types of courses in the program. So we have method courses where we teach you how to do AI for business, right? We got mathematics for AI that's going to help you with the math, the understanding, the algorithms, testing the algorithms. We've got machine learning and AI technology. So you can get right into that and say, okay, how can I do this? Like, what am I going to do? Uh, and then we've got AI on innovation and entrepreneurship. Extremely important because again, this is something new. You've got to be able to convince others that this is the route that you need to go. And this is going to be your strength, right? Because you know AI, you got to convince your company that they need to know AI as well. And this is innovative. This is change. This is new. We have technical courses, which are very specific to AI, right? We have deep learning, natural language processing, reinforcement learning, and its application. Again, you know, and I always kind of tell people this too, that you know, if you're doing a PhD in artificial intelligence, you would just look at deep learning, right? And you would literally spend four to five years understanding deep learning and looking at deep learning. So we're offering an introduction basically to those three different AI technologies, right? Deep learning, natural language processing, reinforcement learning. So you're not gonna get the deep, deep knowledge like you would do if you're doing a PhD. Uh, but what you are getting is enough information to be dangerous, right? You have these this idea of what this is. You will have a very strong understanding of the capabilities of these different technologies. And so when the company comes to you and says, hey, we have this problem, you will have it in your toolkit to say, okay, is this a deep learning program or is this natural language processing or is this reinforcement learning? Which technology do you think is going to be the best one? And you will be sort of the expert in the area who can come back with that solution. We also have what we call application courses. And so this is where, you know, we, we ask, think about AI. So, hey, how can AI be used in finance? How can it be used in marketing? We also have a capstone project in this program too. So it gives you an opportunity to really get hands-on, to basically, you know, bring in a project, almost operationalize it, get it all ready, set to go, to hand over to a company and say, okay, you can do this now. This is all set, ready to go. And this is really important too, because a lot of companies, they understand the need for AI. They want AI, but again, it's a corner of the desk kind of project for a lot of organizations. So a capstone project can take that corner of the desk, make it your priority. You can build something, prove it, talk to them and let them know that, hey, we're ready to go. And so that's a great real world experiential um, project for you to work on and to help out a company. Now, again, because we're a business school, we have what we call power skill courses, right? So we've got, you know, an introduction to management. We understand that there's a lot of applicants to this program um, that have never taken a business course before. So it's important for you to understand 
not only what management is all about, but what we do, but also with the thought process, right? What is going on? What are these MBAs and stuff talking about? We have to understand that. And we also use case studies in that. So, you know, that's, again, a traditional business school kind of way of teaching. You get to dive into some real world experiences and work through those cases. Uh, we have agile project management for AI. So extremely important because these projects around AI, um, they can go off the rails very quickly, right? The scope creep can be phenomenal. So it's important for you to have a good understanding of project management in an agile environment, because that's generally what we're looking at here with AI and technology. Um, but there will be some uh, waterfall in there as well. Just so you, again, you have an understanding of you know, the different types of project management, the different projects you're going to work on and what's going to fit best in your organization for you. We also have AI ethics and policy. Very, very important because again, these systems that we're developing can make thousands of decisions in a second. And so we want to make sure that those decisions are in line with the ethical considerations of the organization and the principles of morality that your organization has as well. Again, risk assessment here, right? You wanna make sure you're fitting in with what the C-suite wants you to fit in with and you're doing the right thing. Um, and then the last course we have here is leading change, which is all about you know developing a vision a strategy and getting buy-in for change management because that is the next step. AI is going to change a lot of people's jobs. It's going to change a lot of processes of organizations. And so you've got to get buy-in for that as well. And so the leading change course is really integral to how you're going to do that. It's a process or um, course, right, to get you ahead of the game to be able to identify the people who are going to, you know, oppose you and the people who are gonna support you and that big chunk of people in the middle who can go either way, right? So you've gotta be able to convince them and work with them that that's the way to go. Now this program, uh, the MMAI program is an in-person program, okay? So it is in Toronto, there is a classroom. Uh, so you have to go to the classroom. We start this year in September, okay? So September 5th is the first, um, what we call the opening session of the program. Um, and then after that opening session, uh, you take class one night every week. So at this current year anyway, it's Tuesday nights and then one full weekend day bi-weekly for 12 months. So basically every Tuesday night and then every other Saturday for a full day from like 8.30 to 4.30. And then the Tuesday nights are usually around 5.30 to 9.30 or so. And so, and they're all downtown Toronto, right in our um, classroom facility. It's, it's at Simcoe and Front Street West, right across the road from the Metro Toronto Convention Center. Um, and so it's very handy to Union Station, the GO, the, the subway, all that kind of stuff. So it's very easy for you to get to. Um, that opening session that I just mentioned, it is actually in Kingston, okay? So what we want you to do there, we want you to sort of leave everything behind, right? We're leaving your family behind, you're leaving your work behind, you're coming to Kingston, you're going to focus on being a student for the week, we're going to introduce you to your teams, we're going to have some instruction around high-performing teams, and we're going to be taking our first um, academic course as well. The intro to management course will be there. And that is also during the week where we're going to be talking about the coaching. So you can see my last bullet there is about ongoing coaching. So during that opening session, we actually introduce you to your teams and your coach. The coach can then sort of oversee how you're making out with the intro to management course. And then that coaching continues on for the full 12 months of the program as well. And so they'll be checking in with you and your teammates a couple of times a month and literally coaching you to be a high performing team. They're going to come in, they're going to observe you, they're going to provide you with some suggestions on how you can sort of leverage those strengths, how you can overcome some of their weaknesses and how you can work very effectively with a diverse group of people on your team. Um, and then other types of coaching too, we do have full career support uh, in this program as well. And so that includes career coaching. Um, and I'm gonna talk about that in a couple of slides away. Uh, now, you know, we've talked about the business and that sort of thing, but we do do technology in this program as well. Um, there's gonna be a lot of Python programming. We do SQL to get access to that data. 
Um, we do have a Microsoft Azure sort of environment or cloud computing environment for you to work on as well. We have Databricks, we have Snowflake, we have SaaS Enterprise or SaaS Via nowadays, and we have access to uh, Tableau as well. So a lot of those things are, um, and actually Snowflake and Databricks, they have university alliance um, groups as well. And they have their own Databricks University. Snowflake has a university. They all, you can get accredited digital badging, all that kind of fun stuff. So we have access to all that as well in the program. Now, who's teaching you in this whole thing? So, um, and this is really interesting because in the MMAI program, and as we all know that artificial intelligence has been advancing in leaps and bounds very, very quickly over the course of a few months. So, what we've done here is we've assembled a team of academics, okay, to help with this program. So when you see Elspeth and Stephen and Tina on this screen here, these are all uh, full-time faculty here at Smith School of Business. And so their research is around different things. Tina does ethics, Elspeth does entrepreneurship and innovation, Stephen does machine learning and AI. And so they do this stuff. But the interesting part is, those other sort of AI courses that I was talking about, so deep learning, um, reinforcement learning, natural language processing, those courses and the technology is actually changing so quickly that what we've done is we've gone out to subject experts. So for example, the reinforcement learning course, of course, is actually taught by a Queen's School of Computing professor. And Sydney's life is reinforcement learning. This is his research. This is what he does on a very regular basis. And so in order for us at a business school to make sure you are getting the latest and greatest, you know, our profs, they're focused on business research, right? So it doesn't really work. They're, they're gonna be behind a little bit. So we've made this conscious decision to go out and get the best of the best. And so we've got Sydney coming in to teach reinforcement learning. The same thing with the deep learning course. We've got uh, Ofer Shea, who used to work at Omnia Deloitte. He now runs a startup who actually does deep learning projects on a regular basis, like daily basis. This is again, what he lives and breathes. And so you're gonna get the latest and greatest. What he does at work during the day, he's gonna be bringing that to the classroom at night. So again, this is just the best environment that we could possibly give you um, because you're learning how to do it in real time. And you're also learning the application of that as well. Because deep learning can be so theoretical, reinforcement learning as well. It could be super, super theoretical and very, very research-based that doesn't really help you in the business place, right? You want to be able to figure out, okay, how can I make something happen with this? How can I use deep learning to really help my company solve those problems? And so we've gone out to those kinds of people to bring in the latest and greatest to make sure we're up to date and you're current and you're getting the best information. Now, overseeing this whole thing, we actually have an advisory board. So it's Analytics and AI Advisory Board is chaired by Mark Schaefer from uh, Disney Company. Um, this advisory board is actually a group of industry people. There's about 25 of them. And they are, are our sounding board. They're the ones who make sure our curriculum is current and it fits the needs of the organizations that they actually work for. So that again is very important. We wanna make sure that what we're doing is in line with what industry needs, right? So when you're out there looking for work or you're working on projects and stuff, you're getting the information that you're gonna to need to be successful out there. And this advisory board, they're always keeping us honest in that and they're making sure that we know this. And in fact, the MMAI program came out of this advisory board because it was one November, well, it was like five, six years ago, um, they all came and they all said, oh, our CEOs want AI. They all want AI. And we're kind of going, okay, do they know what you mean by that? And of course, they, they said, no, they don't know. They just know that in the public, in the press, everyone's saying AI. Any company that doesn't have AI is going to be left behind. So we turned around and said, okay, you know what? Let's work with this advisory board and these people. Let's figure out exactly what they're looking for. And this is how we designed the MMAI program here at Smith. And we launched it literally five years ago. So um, it was a bit ahead of the curve, but it actually fit and met a huge need in the organizations because people needed to understand what AI was and they needed to push back when they had to push back and they needed to be able to accept 
accept the resources and the budgetary stuff to make this stuff run and start building these systems and testing and learning from it. Now, as a student at Smith, um, there's a lot of stuff you can get involved in. We understand that this program is, is what we call a professional master. So the majority of students are working full time and, and they're quite busy. Uh, we also know the age limits of, of our students as well. So a lot of them have young families and marriages and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, we understand if you can't get involved, you don't have time to do this or the bandwidth to do it. But when you do want to get involved, there's a lot of opportunities. So we've got lots of professional workshops happening. We've got lots of technical workshops. So you know, you're used to using Python, but you want to understand SQL a little bit more or Tableau, SAS, Databricks, Snowflake, what have you. We'll bring those people in to help run workshops. You understand those technologies. There's also a lot of clubs, student clubs. If you remember your undergrad days, um, you know, there's lots of clubs, usually at universities as well. And so we have the same kind of thing. Each cohort has a student leadership group or student government group. So you can be class president, vice president, communications, that kind of stuff. Those opportunities are there. And even as a student and as a recent graduate, we have the Smith Business Club, which is about analytics and AI as well. And there's a subgroup of it called Women in Analytics. And so there's another opportunity for you to network, learn what's going on in the industry, meet people, especially our Smith alumni and stuff. Um, and then finally, we have a lot of cross program sort of groups that you can get involved as, in as well. We have the Scotiabank Center for Customer Analytics. That is a research center here at Smith, um, but often they are looking for research associates to help them out with some of the research that they're doing, certainly technical support as well to help do the coding and build systems. Um, we have QA, which is the Queen's University Alternate Asset Fund. So. If you like the idea of finance and technology and stuff and some analytics in there as well, um, automated investing, that kind of stuff, um, Coop is, is a place for you to get involved with because you've got a big pool of actual real dollars that you're working in. It's a nice team cross program. So you're getting some MBA students, some master finance students, you're getting analytics students and you're getting AI students on there as well. And we have um, an equity, diversity, and inclusivity club as well. And um, I just got an invite to that. They're they're having an introduction to Indian dancing in a couple of weeks. So they offer these kinds of opportunities to learn about other cultures and to be able to experience them firsthand as well. And so there's a lot of different types of events throughout the year um, offered there as well. Now, who is in your classroom? So when you're sitting in class, you know, who's to the left, who's to the right? Um, the average age is 34 right now. Um, and average age is, is one thing, but I think the range is far more important, right? So we go from 22 to 52. 22-year-olds, um, they come in with great technical knowledge, right? They've been programming during their undergrad. Um, they're all set, ready to go. The, the 50 two-year-olds out there, they're the ones who are coming in with that business knowledge, right? That political acumen. How do I get these things actually done? How do I get them built? What do I have to say? What do I have to do? How do I have to present these? So they've got that tremendous knowledge as well. And so we bring those uh, sort of extremes together into a team environment. And inside that team, you will learn from one another as much as anybody else, right? So that, that's a very important part of this program. Um, the average work experience is about eight years as well. So you've got these people with this work experience and, and understanding the management piece as well, right? So like I said, how do you get things done? And so who's in the class with you? Um, and so you can understand that there's some breadth and diversity there as well, which is really important. Okay, and I mentioned uh, before that I would bring this up again. So this is our career management framework. So. I mean, we're, you know, obviously people are looking for change, right? There's one thing about taking this kind of a program because you just want to learn. Um, but there's another aspect to this about developing yourself and your career and that sort of thing. So we do offer uh, a career support network. Um, it is about the career, right? It's not just about jobs. There is a job board and there is coaching on how to do, you know, resumes, cover letters, um, how to do an interview, some very technical and sort of puzzle based interviews nowadays. And so we can run you through all that kind of stuff. But also if you're not even thinking about that, if you're thinking, of, you know, I'm really happy working, you know, let's say Bank of Montreal, and I just wanna 
advance my career path. I want to understand what I need to do. We have coaches that can help you, you know, plan out your path, making sure that, you know, you're hitting certain milestones at certain times and that you're learning certain skills, maybe taking certain courses and professional development courses along the way and just setting you up properly to be, you know, successful with your particular career path. Honestly, we have students who are very happy with their job. They're here just to learn about AI and they're not really even thinking about, you know, getting a new job, applying for a new job. That's fine too. That's what this program is all about. But we do offer this career management framework for those of you who do want to advance and just make sure you're on the right track to where you want to be. Okay, and our admissions requirements. So this is a master's degree. So again, you do need an undergraduate degree from a recognized university. Now, inside that, we do ask people for their transcripts. We want to be able to see at least one mathematics or statistics course that covers linear regression, covers calculus. We're also looking for things like physics as well. Um, and we want to just make sure that you know, you're comfortable and you can be successful doing math and working in calculations because you know the last thing we want to do is bring you into a program you know where you're spending lots of money on this stuff and then you you know aren't comfortable doing it or you can't do it or whatever's going on there we don't want that to happen so we want to make sure right from the very beginning that you have the ability to do good quantitative analysis and work with mathematics and formulas we do ask for people to have two years of work experience. That's sort of a hard stop there. You're not going to see anybody in the program without two years of work experience. Um, there might be a couple of exceptional applicants, but that's probably only because, and I haven't really seen too many of them, but they've probably been doing different types of educational degrees. So maybe a master's in something else, and they've got some experiential work there as well. So they've done internships, they've done co-ops, that sort of thing, or they've run their own company. And that, you know, there's that side as well. You know, we want to be able to see people who have literally the experiences of working in a business or working with others. And we want to see that so you can bring it to the classroom and that will enrich the classroom and the learning experience as well when everyone shares. Uh, we need two letters of reference. Now, these references do not have to be academic. We can, uh, we can, you know, we're happy to have one, we have supervisory. Uh, reference and then one could even be a coworker um, reference and so we can leave that up with you but our application advisors will work with you on that we will need official transcripts for an undergraduate institution if that institution is outside of canada then we understand that that might be difficult to get an official sort of transcript from them so we do look for and we would probably want to have a wes or wes assessment uh, a detailed one from you as well. And again, just like an official transcript, that assessment would have to come directly from Wes, and then we could consider that. That's a that the, these are like rules set up by the Ontario government. So we have to have these things in order to get you into the program. So um, that's a non-negotiable thing. Um, but to start, right, we can we can start looking at your resume. Um, maybe a cover letter if you want to introduce yourself uh, and understand sort of you know who you are, why do you want to take the program, and where, what are you going to do with it at the end? Those are what I would say the three paragraphs of a cover letter. Um, ultimately, once you get through all that, you're going to do an interview with uh, with the director of the program. Um, next little while, it'll be me. Uh, and so we can have a chat. Just again, one of those confirmations to make sure that the program is, is right for you and that you'll fit in the program properly and that you'll be successful going forward. Um, we're a business school, and I know around the world, business schools, you always ask for GMATs. Um, we have a little different uh, perspective on that. I would personally much rather you practice, you know, Python, SQL, some of the tools, understanding mathematics again. I'd rather you focus on that than focus on the GMAT, right? Because the GMAT is, is very comprehensive. It takes a long time to study for that and for you to be successful at the GMAT. So we'd rather you start other other things, right? So don't start it without talking to us first. Um, and then that way we can make sure that, you know, if you need the GMAT to strengthen the rest of your application, that's fine. Like I said, it's going to take you a couple months to get that going. So it's important to start that quickly. But talk to us first. 
Now, what are the next steps? So we want you to um, start with a transcript and a resume. Those are the two, what I call the minimums of there. Like I said, it would probably help to have a letter of introduction on that as well. Uh, once we have those three things, then we can assign you to an application advisor. And that application advisor will then do a preliminary assessment of who you are and your strength to get into this program. Ultimately, they'll come back and they'll say, okay, you know what, you're going to have to do this, you're going to have to do that in order to be strong enough. But their job is really to present you in the strongest way possible, okay? That is literally their job, is to make sure that they are your advocate in there. So when they bring your application to me as the director, um, you know, I'm confident that you're going to be a strong candidate for this program. Um, we do rolling admissions as well. So there's no actual cutoff dates. Really, the only cutoff date is, you know, the start date of the program itself. Um, however, what this means is that, so we don't have a, we don't have a deadline, right? There's no deadline to apply, but, and this is the big but that I'm going to, you know, bring this up, is that this is a very popular program. Um, and so in general, we often have a wait list for it. So it's really important that you start your application as early as possible. There's no fee to apply. So just giving us your transcript resume and that introduction letter, um, that will get you started. What will happen then is then we come back and we say, oh, wait, we think we need your GMAT. That's gonna take several months for you to sort of test for and apply um, or not, right? If you're okay to go ahead, then we'll get you into the process. We'll get some, we'll take a look at your transcripts. We will you know, look at your references and then we'll get you to the interview stage. And then we send out offers like, you know, within five or six business days of an interview happening. So that's, you know, the process itself can be very quick if everything is well organized and planned out. And that's where the application advisor can help you. Um, and then if you, uh, you know, if the program does sort of fill up, uh, then we do have wait lists. Uh, we also allow people to defer their admission to the following year. We let you do that once. Um, if you give us a deposit, then we'll just consider you um, a student enrolled in that next year as well. So there is that option. Now, this is where it also gets tough. For those of you who are international students and you have to get a study visa in order to do this, there have been quite a few delays in getting those visas from the Canadian government. And so that could also be a challenge. So if you're an international student and you were thinking of joining our program on September 5th, 2023, I'm sorry to say, but I don't think you're going to be able to get that visa in time. Um, we're working with a number of students that started their application several months ago, and we're still waiting for a lot of visas to come in. So there still seems to be a bit of a lag happening there. So if you are an international student on this call today, I would plan for a September or August 2024 start, not 2023. Um, so that's unfortunate, it's part of bureaucracy, it's just the reality of what we're faced with. Um, but, you know, again, we're accepting applications for that year as well. We'll put you into our system, we use Salesforce, so we keep track of everybody. And if you're thinking about a 2024 start, that's perfectly fine. I would still recommend that you start now because then we can get you, you know, an offer letter, get you enrolled in the program, and that will give you lots of months to be able to get your study visas and stuff. So, um, you know, I don't want to uh, discourage people too, too much, but I want to encourage people to get in there, get the system, get it done, uh, because these are definitely bottlenecks for everybody. Okay, and this is the the, the prices for the graduating uh, cohort from 2024. So for domestic students, so this is the group that starts in September 2023. Um, for domestic students, the program fee is $67,640 Canadian. For international students, it's 88,640 Canadian. Uh, these amounts are total and sort of what I'll call all-inclusive program fees. So that includes all your tuition, all your books and learning materials, your meals and accommodations during the opening and closing sessions, all the software licenses, access to Databricks, that kind of thing. Um, and so it is all inclusive. 
The only part that's really not covered is your travel to the opening and closing sessions. So depending on where you are, and people come from all over the place, but if you're in Toronto, you're responsible for coming to Kingston. Okay, so you're responsible for that, whether it's going to be flying or train or car. Um, but once you check in to the hotel or where you're staying, then at that point, we take care of everything. So we'll take care of all your accommodation. We take care of all your food, we take care of social events and that kind of stuff as well. So all that is included in these um, program fees. The, the fees themselves, right, in order to be enrolled in the program, we ask for a $2,000 deposit. Once we get that deposit, then you're considered enrolled and you'll get access to information about the program. You get connected to what we call program manager and the program manager will lead you through the next steps. And that gets you access to what we call a, a Queens net ID that's your login and email for Queens. And that gives you um, accessibility to our, our learning systems, D2L and everything else and LinkedIn learning, all that kind of fun stuff as well. And then after the $2,000, then the remaining amount of money is split into three installment payments over the year. Um, and again, you know, to make it a little bit easier for you, for sure. Okay. Now, this is what, uh, you know, I always try to bring it back, right? Because, you know, it, it is about AI, but it's also a business, right? We know that analytics and AI and using and developing these insights, right, are really going to build business value for you and your organization. We've seen this time and time again. We've seen tremendous successes. It is not easy. It is very complex, um, but, you know, it is totally doable. But the big thing is too, is that AI is never going to work without those strong power skills that we've been talking about, right? You need to have and understand the vision of where you're going with this. What kind of problems are you trying to solve? What are you going to implement? How are you going to do it? You need to build a strategy on that, what the process is gonna look like. You need leaders, right? If you don't have a strong leader at the helm who are leading these projects, who are really understanding what's happening, um, you need that leadership skills. You need the understanding the communication skills. Change management, AI is changing the world very quickly. Um, you have to be able to process that. You have to be able to get your allies, build out your allies, and make sure they're going to support you as you go through this process developing these systems. Uh, and you can't do it alone, right? That's the other piece of it. You cannot do this alone. Um, you have to work with others, and you have to be successful with others. You have to communicate effectively with others. So that collaboration piece is really, really important. And then if you follow all those things, it's going to be very are not easy, but it's going to be a much logical path to get to a true digital culture in your organization, a culture where you're using data to make evidence-based decisions, how you can develop AI systems to be very powerful, who can streamline what I would call the mundane, right? Where it leaves you and your team the ability to be very creative and thoughtful in what you're gonna be thinking about. What's the next vision that you're gonna do? What kind of strategy are you gonna do? You don't want to be able to do those mundane tasks because we have computer systems that can do it better, faster, and more effectively, but they have to be designed properly. Okay, and that's it for the formal uh, part. Um, this is me, Dean McEwen. Uh, there's my email address. Feel free to uh, send me an email. Uh, that QR code connects to my LinkedIn um, profile as well, so I'm happy to connect with you on that. Um, and now I've got a couple of questions here. Um, if you're missing a stats course or didn't contain linear regression, are you able to take a single course to qualify? Yeah, so Amanda, yeah, just make sure you talk to our application advisors about that because um, interestingly enough, um, statistics is more relevant to the analytics side of things. Um, we're, we're more concerned about mathematics um, for the AI program. So if we can see that kind of balance, um, you know, you're going to need an understanding of statistics, but we actually offer, um, we have some online courses here at Smith, which would be free. So once you're enrolled, you would get access to that. And it's like a refresher stats course, a refresher Python, and a refresher SQL course as well. And so we would get you to do those before you started the program. So you'd be in good shape before the program actually started. 
Okay, the next one, are there any kinds of scholarships for Canadians women in tech fields? So um, we do have a number of entrance scholarships um, for this program. Uh, basically, it's about $2,000 each. Uh, however, they're awarded based on your academics. So we would be looking at you know, probably around a 4.0 GPA to be considered for that scholarship. There's no additional application for that. It's our admissions committee. We'll look at your file and say, whoa, this person's academically super strong. We'll get them a, um, a scholar, a $2,000 scholarship for that. We do have a couple of other entrance scholarships offered through our dean's office. Um, so we have one scholarship for a black student. We have one scholarship for Indigenous students as well. So there's a, it's, they're competitive. There is a separate application for that. And so we will let you know, um, you know, if you or when you need to apply for that. And there's a separate um, adjudication committee that looks at those and they award those. Those two awards are worth $10,000 each. So um, that's a pretty good uh, amount of money. And then the third one is uh, there's a vector scholarship um for ai for artificial intelligence and the vector scholarship is worth i think it's thirteen thousand four hundred dollars canadian uh there's a fairly well actually if, you, if you're thinking of this september start date september 2023 start date the vector deadlines have already passed and so we, we actually were quite lucky we had three of our students got the vector scholarships this year so that was um pretty phenomenal. We usually only get one or two, but we got three this year, which is terrific. Um, so if you're thinking about, you know, applying for Vector, uh, what I would suggest is you get into our application pool as quickly as possible, and you need to be enrolled in the program before February of 2024 for a start date in, um, in the summer of 2024. So if you want to do that, save the Vector for next year and then join us then. Um, and the thing, and then that's basically it for the standard stuff. There are other scholarships out there um, offered, um, but not necessarily through Smith. They would be ones you apply to for yourself to other organizations. And then Ted, if you hold a Queen's Executive MBA, are there any accommodations made on tuition or course load? Um, Ted, those, that's basically that's that'll be on a person-to-person -person basis that we'll talk to you about, and then see what kind of courses you actually took in the EMBA, and then how they apply to us. Um, but again, that's a conversation. I'd be happy to um, set up a meeting to chat with you about that for sure. Kisham, I live in Toronto. Should I come to Kingston on September fifth? So yes. Yeah, so those. The opening session and we, you know, closing session or what we call innovation week, those are in Kingston. So you would basically, for those two one week sessions, you come to Kingston and you stay in Kingston for that week as well. So you're expected to do that. Um, all the other classes, the Tuesday nights and every other Saturday, those are all in Toronto for sure. The reason we want you to come to Kingston is basically because, you know, we want you to sort of you know, leave your work and home life behind so you can come and focus on being a student. You're going to be learning. You're going to be, you know, constantly learning. We actually, we have a pretty tight schedule for you. We, we start you early in the morning. Uh, we're going to keep you till the early evenings as well um, to make sure. And then when class time is over, then you're going to have team meetings and, and some social things and some educational things like you know, alumni panels and, and talks and that kind of stuff as well. So, and, and of course, some social things. We do some axe throwing, we've done rock climbing, uh, boat cruises, all this kind of fun stuff. So, um, you know, it's a very, very busy time when you're here. So it's best if you don't have to worry about your family, your pets, uh, taking out the garbage, that kind of stuff. That's all left behind when you come to Kingston. Okay. And I think that's all of the questions. So I think we're all set and we're actually right on time too at uh, 1256. So again, thank you very much um, for joining me today. Uh, if you are, as I mentioned, a domestic student, um, you know, you can still apply um, to the September start. That will work. We can get you through um, the application process. That won't be a problem. If you are an international student, I would highly recommend. I mean, if you want to try, you know, I'm not going to stop you from trying. Um, we can try to get you through that. But again, if you can't get that study visa, 
in time for September, then we can defer your application to next year. That's not a problem either. Uh, we can just move the whole thing forward. Okay, and Saeed says, how do I connect to an application advisor? So if you go to our website, which is sort of where you registered for this webinar, um, there is a separate screen about contact us or tell us about yourself. Fill out that form, get us that um, the resume and an unofficial transcript that will start, and then we can assign you an application advisor, and then they'll be in touch with you to sort of complete your application. They should be in touch with you every couple of weeks. Okay. Perfect. I think we're all set. Okay. Thank you very much again, everybody, and uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.